Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Welcome to worship this fourth Sunday of Easter uh, at St. John's Lutheran Church, the uh, mobile site in the Coleman Family Dining Room in Erie, Pennsylvania. Uh, I um, First thing I have to say is I really miss being with you all. Uh, I never realized in my adult life um, how much uh, I really love worship and love gathering with you and others that I've gathered with in the past. Until now, uh, it's impossible to do so. So I want you to know I miss you. Um, I have decided that I will be in the office now uh, as usual. So on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'll be in. That will begin this coming Tuesday. So if you need to stop by, we'll keep our six feet from each other and uh, do our best not to sneeze and cough. And uh, if you need to see me or be in touch with me, I'm going to be in Onion Town. I think it's safe to do that now. I want to uh, ask that we all extend our sympathy to the uh, Bush and Hazlett family on the death of uh, Robert Hazlett. Uh, this was on Friday, I believe it was. So um, we'll be having a service, private service on Tuesday at uh, the funeral home for Bob. And I ask that you keep the whole family in your prayers. I want to share with you uh, a little piece from a letter uh, we received from our Bishop Michael Lozano this past week. And uh, just cutting to the quick, I will be communicating more complete information with explanations uh, later on, uh, perhaps early this coming week. But uh, I want to read one paragraph from his letter, which uh, conveys the bulk of what we all need to know right now. Uh, the bishop writes, I am recommending congregations continue to self-quarantine until May 31st, 2020, the day of Pentecost, if not longer. I am recommending we give our communities in which we live and work time to adjust to the state's reopening plan and to allow for the dedicate detection, excuse me, of any potential new hot spots within our communities. We do not want our congregations to become known hot spots because we return to in-person worship too soon. Further, this will give our congregations time to prepare their buildings for reopening to public worship. So there it is. You may or may not know that uh, our Bishop Michael Lozano is a uh, Lieutenant Colonel in the uh, Navy Reserves. Uh, he is a chaplain. And uh, some pastors uh, and I met with uh, the bishop uh, via Zoom this past week. And uh, I learned what I had already suspected which is that when the bishop recommends something, that's what he's asking for. He really wants us to do as he asks. And so. I think it is safe for us to assume that we will not be gathering for worship at St. John's through the month of May. Um, I'm, I'm going to just level with you. I hate this. <laughs> I love our video worship together. I love the considerable beauty I'm finding in that, the gifts that people have to share and how we're doing this. But I really love being with you. But we're all going to have to be strong right now. And I will have more to say uh, during, the, uh, during this next week as I will communicate with the congregation on behalf of Church Council. I want to say a word of <clears throat> thanks to those who are <clears throat> excuse me, participating in today's worship service. And please forgive me if, please forgive me if, I, if I miss anybody. But the folks I have on my list are Bob Schmall, Brad Gosser, Jake Lasko, Ruth Misek, Andy Yost, and yours truly. So thanks for all of the work that people uh, devote to this worship service. Now let's take a moment <clears throat> to prepare our hearts and minds for confession and forgiveness.
<clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. 
for the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep. Send us as shepherds to rescue the lost, to heal the injured, and to feed one another with knowledge and understanding. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Acts 2, verses 42 to 47. Those who had been baptized devoted themselves to the apostles, teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all, as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the good will of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added their number, uh, those who were being saved.
second reading is from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 19 to 25. It is a credit to you if, aware of God, you endure pain during suf suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you, when you are right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that, free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds we have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. Gospel according to John, the tenth chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The only one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls out his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes ahead of them, and, they will, and the sheep will follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him just because they do not know the stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters me will be saved, and whoever, come, and whoever will come in and will go out and find pasture. The thief comes by to steal and kill and destroy. I came they may have life and they have abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am a good shepherd. I know my own and my own knows me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay, lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father, the Gospel of the Lord. crazy times we live in, aren't they? There's the understatement of the year. We're all, or most of us, are trying to kind of behave ourselves and hunker down as best we can and not do all the things that we'd like to do. Um, not able to do some of the things that would be really good to do right now, uh, such as come to church and be together. But, well, life continues, doesn't it? 
life uh, and death. I'm going to go to a, a couple of kind of dark places today. I'm um, sorry about that. But uh, I think this is where right now the gospel lesson for today leads us. It's the, uh, it's the Good Shepherd gospel from John, um, as you heard uh, Jake read for us. And um, I sure know that uh, with the people around me in my life, uh, life continues, death continues, uh, life. Um, I mentioned uh, Michael Koch last week in a sermon, and I had mentioned that uh, he was uh, put on a organ donation protocol after a stroke. Now, Michael is the same age as my Micah, uh, about 28 years old. Well, uh, everybody thought it was curtains. He bounced back. The young man is now out of intensive care and uh, is looking at a long stint in rehab but again, um, this after being kind of written off, life continues and uh, miracles continue. But then people die too. Um, I mentioned in the announcements that Bob Haslett died. Um, I'd never met him before, uh, but uh, his wife Linda, Daughter Heather and I had a, a really beautiful visit at St. Paul's on Friday. I was amazed they let me in, uh, but they did. They <clears throat> made sure I was doused with hand sanitizer and had a mask on, and I went in and we chatted. And I, I spoke to Bob for, I don't know, five or ten minutes. Uh, there was no indication that he heard me, but... I told him things that I would think a person on the doorstep of eternity would want to know, uh, being a Christian. Again, we had prayer together, um, and I left. And about 10 minutes after I left, I received word that uh, Bob indeed had gone on to glory. The timing of what happened that day is kind of hard to overlook. I never claim to know how God works in this world, but boy, it sure did seem as though um, God's hand was uh, touching that moment um, in a pretty heavy way. Life continues and death continues. And Maybe you're like Kathy and I are, and that uh, we find ourselves saying, what's wrong with people? You find yourself saying that too? What is wrong with people? Well, we had a, a moment like that this past week that struck us right to the heart. and. Um, it had to do with a young lady who lives in Columbus, Ohio. Some of you have heard about this already. Uh, people I've been in touch with uh, individually. Um, and this is where we go into some darkness. A uh, young lady named Abby, I think she's about 28 or 29 too. Uh, she has a young uh, child, Henry, and a husband, Tim. And uh, again, they live in Columbus, Ohio, and uh, 6 a.m. one morning last week, there was a knock at Abby's front door, and she opened it up, and a man was standing in front of her, and he shot her four times. He shot his weapon six times, but he hit Abby four times. Talk about a girl with some moxie. She leaned into that door, shut it, locked it, and uh, well, you don't you don't mess with a woman's baby or husband. They were upstairs, and uh, she she went as her Abby's sister said went mama bear. Abby's in the hospital right now. 
It was very frightening because her carotid artery had been torn. She'd been shot uh, in the jaw and uh, somewhere else on the face, I think, and shoulder and arm. And as we speak, she may be coming out of uh, shoulder surgery. She's already had surgery to uh, repair her jaw. Her mouth is going to be wired shut for about eight weeks. But it looks like she's going to be okay. But I don't know how I would feel about opening my front door anymore. When Kathy and I received the call, I took the call at first. Um, and we were sitting in our workplace, um, the round table on the enclosed front porch. I'm on one side, Kathy's on the other, and she heard enough of the call to, um, to get what was going on. And uh, we talked for a while to Abby's sister and uh, hung up, and there was that question. What is wrong with these people? What is wrong? Does it seem to you as though there's so many different times that we could say that right now? What's wrong with people? <clears throat> What's wrong? Seems like there's a lot wrong right now. And uh, not too much fun. My cat is trying to decide whether to jump on me right now, so don't be surprised if somebody photobombs the sermon. Well, I don't want to oversimplify things, but I, I think something that's wrong is that the world really does need a shepherd world needs a good shepherd. And I'm not saying uh, the world needs a shepherd to save us from damnation. The world doesn't need a shepherd to fix us and make us all all right. But it seems to me that the world needs a shepherd to talk to us and guide us. And at this moment in time, I am all too uh, happy to confess that we need a shepherd. And more than that, I don't think it's possible to say, uh, for anybody to say, we need a shepherd uh, without also saying, I need a shepherd. So I'm asking you today, Putting aside all of our all of the faces we put on for the world around us, the faces that uh, say, "I'm good, I got this, I'm all right," and you know what? A lot of times we do, but there's another spot in here that needs the voice of the good shepherd. That needs the voice of God to speak uh, into what St. Benedict called uh, the ear of our heart. Speak, Good Shepherd, into the ear of our heart so that we can be guided by you, be taught by you, be strengthened by you. Now this is such a beautiful world we live in. And out my window right now there are I don't know, I think that's a dogwood tree in bloom and some other tree right out there with, with uh, white blossoms on it. Kathy and I took a, took a ride around Presque Isle last night. It was just gorgeous. Kathy and I have a bit of a different style in how we go about um, going for a ride and uh, relaxing. Um, I like to go for a ride, but uh, Kathy likes to go for a ride and stop the car about every, oh, I don't know, 50 feet, and get out and look around and take pictures. And I got to tell you, we had a, there was a, uh, an egret. In fact, a whole bunch of egrets, amazing, beautiful white birds, uh, blue heron. Uh, we saw geese all over the place. There was also a bunch of goslings. So um, just a lot of beauty. 
And <clears throat> as is typical in the beauty of a marriage, by the time we left the peninsula, I was really ready to leave the peninsula. I looked at plenty of animals. And Kathy probably could have stayed another hour, but that's how it is in this beautiful world um, with people who love each other. The bird feeder this morning out front, the yellow finch and its mate showed up. Uh, first time seeing that this year. Um, I say for myself, you know, I have love in my life. I have what I need, food, shelter. I have you and God, but I need a shepherd. I dare say we all need a shepherd. And in the gospel reading today, Jesus says, uh, or is, Jesus says of himself, I guess, as the good shepherd, he calls out his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him, because they know his voice. And a little while later, he says, I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know my Father. You know, something else that uh, Jesus says in the Gospel reading today, he says it to hopefully us, who I hope we know his voice. I hope we listen with the ear of our hearts to his voice. But he says, as the Good Shepherd, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. So Jesus, the Good Shepherd, didn't come so that things would be terrible. And so sometimes it's hard to figure out why things are the way they are. Why would anybody show up at our family friend's door and just start shooting? This world needs a shepherd. This world needs a heart with an ear that will listen. And I think if we look in the mirror and think long and hard, we'll also find ourselves saying, you know what, I need a shepherd. So my prayer for all of us is that we would somehow or other find the time to listen. Listen for the voice of one who knows us and hopefully if we listen long enough and hard enough we'll know him too because we sure do need him amen
our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing in the risen life of Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church. Strengthen ministers of word, sacrament, and service who are called to shepherd your people. Renew your church and unite us through your spirit. Send us out to serve our neighbors and to receive their care with gratitude. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer for the earth for pastures and prairies rivers and streams oceans and mountains for those who care for livestock and pets for all animals wild and domestic with whom we share this world Lord in your mercy hear our prayer for the nations guide leaders into the path of peace uphold all who govern bring an end to injustice warfare and violence Protect those who risk their lives tending to those who are ill. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those in need, for those who lack safe housing and adequate food, for workers who, whose pay is insufficient to meet their daily needs, comfort the grieving and heal the sick, especially those affected by the corona pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For this congregation, Grant us strength and patience during this time of separation from each other. Give wisdom to our council committees and all who guide St. John's ministries. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With thanksgiving, we remember those who have died in faith. In your goodness and mercy, bring us to the fulfillment of your promise to dwell in your house forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Joining our voices with your faithful ones in every time and place, we offer our prayers in the name of the Risen One, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. And now, as I have said in recent weeks, I will say again, stay right where you are as much as you can to love and serve the Lord. Amen.
burning the 